Franz Joseph trusted only in his army, and his army indeed was the solitary institution which brought all his peoples into a unified whole under strict discipline. But then, quite suddenly, Schwarzenberg died at the age of 52. The man who had suffered most from the harshness and violence of his methods was the young Franz Joseph. Schwarzenberg had encouraged everything that was arrogant and self-sufficient in the 22-year-old boy ruler, who in other times might have shown warmth and imagination. But not all feeling had been drilled out of him. In the following year, he went to Ischl, a favorite retreat of his parents, among the lakes and mountains of the Salzkammergut. Franz Joseph loved the happy, unceremonious atmosphere, where he could rediscover the youth he'd prematurely abandoned. And it was in Ischl that he fell in love. Elizabeth was 15 years old, a scarcely awakened beauty who'd been allowed to run wild in the great park of her home at Possenhofen on the shores of the Starnberger See in Bavaria. Possenhofen was more of a farm than a castle. For Elizabeth, with her love of animals, of nature and of poetry, it was the perfect home. Possenhofen's very shabbiness spelled home and was presided over by a warm, comfortable mother and occasionally visited by a charming erratic father, brother of the Bavarian king. A father who instilled into his children, and above all into his favorite daughter, the belief that the Wittelsbachs were the elect of God. Elizabeth lived in a kingdom of dreams. Now she wept not from repulsion, but from bewilderment and fear of the future. When her mother formally asked for her consent, she said through tears, How could anyone not love him? But why of all people me? So young and so unimportant. And to her governess the following day, Yes, I do love the emperor. But if only he were not the emperor. In the following year, they were married. The Viennese saw hope and promise in her beauty. Nobody seemed to remember that not only were Franz Joseph and Elizabeth first cousins, but that Elizabeth herself was a child of second cousins, a dangerous heritage for the Habsburg heirs. The Hofburg wasn't the happiest place for a honeymoon with its total lack of privacy, and the marriage was already off to a bad start. The formality of Vienna typified by her other new home, the vast summer palace of Schönbrunn, overwhelmed the young Elizabeth. Franz Joseph, with no Schwarzenberg to guide him, was overburdened by his responsibilities and obligations as emperor, though the world was already amazed at his capabilities and endurance. His mother, meanwhile, was determined to turn this young girl into an empress. But she was drilling her too hard, not maliciously, but out of sheer lack of imagination. Elizabeth heard what was expected of her and rejected it. The Spanish horses were once free. Elizabeth was not to be broken. she was dreaming of her lost freedom. She loved